Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we have created the network layout of stormwater systems. Now, we are ready to enter the system data to the plotted network. In this video, we will learn how to enter the element data using the properties manager and the flex tables with steps to enter rainfall data using storm data tool. Units can be modified at any time by clicking on any property field and selecting the units and formatting. To start, we will enter the data using the Properties Manager. Now, to enter the data for Catch Basin, we will double click on CB1, which opens Properties Manager on the right side of the screen, as there is no inflow element connected to CB1. Let's set flow additional subsurface to 2 feet cube per second with elevation ground as 104 feet and elevation invert as 102 feet. Now we can directly double click on transition T1 or we double click the navigate downstream at the top left of the properties manager to navigate to T1 properties. We enter elevation ground as 103 feet and elevation invert as 101 feet. Our next step is to input data for the catchment. For that, we double click on catchment CM1 and enter an area of 5 acres. We will set the runoff method to rational method with the runoff coefficient as 0.65. Generally, larger areas with permeable soils, flat slopes and dense vegetation should have the lowest C values. Smaller areas with dense soils, moderate to steep slopes and sparse vegetation should be assigned with the highest C values. We set the time concentration to 10. Now, to select the outflow element, we open the drop down menu and click on Select Outflow Element. After that, we will select CB2 from the drawing. CM1 will be connected to CB2 by a dotted line. Notice that CO1 is a 12 inch circular concrete pipe, so we do not need to modify those parameters taken from the prototype. Also, notice the set invert to start and set invert to stop fields are currently set to true and the invert upstream and invert downstream fields are grayed out. This means the pipes upstream and downstream inverts are being pulled from the inverts of the connecting upstream and downstream structures, which are CB1 and T1 respectively for conduit CO1. Now, we will enter the data using the flex tables. For that, we can click on flex tables in the home tab or we can go to the analysis tab. The flex table allows us to copy the data from any data source such as Excel sheets, Word files, text files, etc. and paste it to the required column of component. It also provides the flexibility in adjusting the column's convenience purposes. Now, let's copy the data from Excel Sheets to the flex tables of the catch basin. We open the data set in Excel file and copy all the columns which are required and paste it to the flex table. After adding all of the data for components, we finally assign the storm data to the network. For that, we can click on storm data in the home tab or we can go to the component tab. In the dialog box, we select new user defined IDF table. From the storm event input, we click on the add range 
to enter the return periods. We enter return periods of 2, 5, 10, 25, 50 years. Now, by clicking on Add Duration and enter 5, 10, 15, 30, 60, 120 hours. Now, let's copy the data for the IDF table from the data set. From this, we get the IDF curves. We close the dialog box. For the last step, we assign the storm event to the network. For that, we assign click on storm data and select global storm event. From the drop down menu, we select the user defined IDF table 1 to 5 years. In this video, we have learned how to enter the element data using properties manager and flex table. We have also assigned the storm data to the network. In the next video, we are going to study the results after we compute the network. That's all for today folks. Thank you.